Good morning, Interweb. World Builders Log 4. So today we are supposed to start work on our habitable planet, but I'd like to take just another quick detour and just polish up some of the stuff we were doing in the previous episodes. Namely, I'd like to rework the Stellar Neighborhood based on your guys' feedback and also rework the planetary system a little bit, again, based on your guys' feedback. In fact, I already tried to record this episode doing those two items of reworking and working on the habitable planet and it just went on for like an hour and a half and it was just way too long. So let's do the touch up first and then we'll move on to the habitable planet in the next video. But first, as always, follow up. So the spreadsheet has been updated, lots of little minor updates here and there. The big one though is the introduction of random seed functionality in the star system generator. So if we pop on over to the galaxy tab and head down to the star system coordinate generator, we see random seed. So in the last episode, what was happening is the spreadsheet was using a random number function that was dynamic. That is that every time you edited any of the sheets, it would update the random number and everything would change. So shout out to Patreon and Discord user Kaloob, who came up with a cool way of implementing a seed. And that is you just stick in a number between one and two billion. The spreadsheet takes that number and uses it to generate random numbers. The difference from last time is that this is static, so I can edit the sheet and nothing will change, which I think is a huge plus in terms of functionality. So massive thanks, Caloop. Also, lots of people got in touch to say that the distribution issues I was having in the previous video were not based on the way that Google Sheets handles random numbers. It was in fact a math error on my part. So I fixed up the math and hopefully this will result in a stellar neighborhood that has a more uniform distribution. I've done a little bit of testing and it looks like that so far. So all in all, the star system coordinate generator is much, much better now. So thank you to everyone who emailed in and helped out with that. Also, lots of people left comments to say that my worries about star systems being too close together are kind of unfounded. Star systems can be really close together, it turns out, without the gravitational interactions between the two systems leading to instability. So again, I was worried that if I brought two star systems very close to one another, planets would start getting knocked out of orbit, asteroids would go mental, it'd be chaos. And according to Forward Sensitus here, Gliese 710, in about a million years or so, is going to come within about 10,000 AU of us, which is like really close. And apparently that's not going to lead to any issues. And they go on to say that a small M dwarf could be 0.77 light years from a star system without any issues. And that was highlighted by others as well in comments. So great. So with all that in the bag, the random seed, the updates to the distribution and the new info on star system spacing, let's go and re-roll the star system coordinate generator and remap it to get something that hopefully looks a little bit better. Now I was messing around with the seed off air and I found one that I really like. It's 140286197. So hit return and we generate a whole bunch of systems. So just like before, I'm going to go over to GeoGebra now, head on over to the 3D calculator, input the radius of my stellar neighborhood, which is 12 light years, head back to the sheet, copy these coordinates, put them in GeoGebra, and hopefully, like I said, better results. So time lapse engaged. So this guy is our closest star system. So like last time, I'm just gonna make it a green color to make sure it sticks out. And O here is our most distant fella. So let's make him red. All right, there are the boils. So that looks a lot more even of a distribution than last time, so that's cool. Very, very much enjoy that. 
And just like last time, I'm going to copy all the systems barring the home system, barring artifacts here. And zero out their z-axis so I get to see where the system is in the plane. Which again is just going to help with the art later. So not mandatory at all, just a little aid for me. Okay, one stellar neighborhood, done. Yeah, and everything looks to be in order. All the points in the plane are matching up. Cool. All right. Right, so that is the stellar neighborhood done. Next up, we got our planetary system. So I was thinking a lot about what the astronomers were saying about two asteroid belts being unstable. The idea being that if you have a gas giant controlling two asteroid belts, like one inwards and one outwards, that's not great. It's going to be one gas giant controlling one belt. So there's a bunch of options we could do here. Like for example, we could have an asteroid belt and then beyond that, a gas giant. And then let's say that gas giant controls that asteroid belt. And then beyond that again, we could have a gas giant controlling a Kuiper belt. That would be one option for what's happening in our outer system. We could also do something like gas giant controlling an asteroid belt beyond it. And then we have our outer gas giant controlling the Kuiper belt. So those would be like our one asteroid belt options. If we really wanted to, I guess we could probably do something based on what the astronomers were saying. Something like asteroid belt, gas giant, that gas giant controlling the asteroid belt, and then just do another set of that. So then have another asteroid belt with another gas giant controlling that and then have our final gas giant controlling the Kuiper belt and any combination thereof. So again, we could have, say, asteroid belt, gas giant, or at least in theory. I'm sure the astronomers will let me know if this is a whole bunch of nonsense. So asteroid belt, gas giant, gas giant controls an inner asteroid belt, then immediately another gas giant controlling an outer asteroid belt, then another gas giant controlling a Kuiper belt. Now, part of the goal was to try and keep like, have a fairly minimal system. So I think really these two asteroid belts, even if we could make them work and they're, um, and they would be stable, I think it's just an awful lot of clutter and goes against my goals. So I think we're going to resort to the one asteroid belt system. And just because this is a basic build, I'm going to do the most basic thing, the most solar system like. And it's up to you to expand upon that and do something more wild. So I'm going to go for that. Asteroid belt, gas giant, then another gas giant, then a the Kuiper belt. Like, like a minimal solar system. I was also messing around with this off air and I found a, a really interesting combination of the spacing factor and the first orbit that I actually like a lot better. And that was uh, 1.09 as the spacing factor and not 0.6 as the first orbit. So again, this gets me like a really tight system, which I, I kind of like. So we could have a rocky planet here, like a Mercury type jazz. Then we have our habitable world. Then we could have another rocky planet, say. Here's our major gas giant, because remember major gas giants goes ju go just beyond the frost line. And so inwards of that, as per this chap here, we'll get an asteroid belt, And then we have our next gas giant, we'll call it like a minor gas giant slash maybe ice giant, depending on whether or not it's, it is uh, like Saturn or like Uranus and Neptune. And then beyond that, we got a Kuiper belt. So we have a really tight in system, like the system extends only air quotes out to 18 AU, which I enjoy. And it means that I'm skipping less orbits. I kind of like that. So let's do that. Let's take our outermost gas giant. It's semi-major axis, 18.04. Let's drop it into this boy over here. And we get a Kuiper belt going from 23 to 28 AU. So again, a really tight little system. Now at the risk of losing everyone with the mats, I'd actually like to just take a second to do some more mats. 
just because like we're giving all this treatment to the Kuiper belt by figuring out where it begins and where it ends or at least the, the major component of it and with the asteroid belt we're just like doing none of that we're just saying it's here so let's let's do that let's work it out and let's um figure out exactly where it begins and where it ends so if we check our asteroid belt We see that it runs, the main belt anyways, runs from the 2 to 1 mean motion resonance point out to here, which is the 4 to 1 mean motion resonance point with Jupiter. That is, at the outer limit, objects orbit twice for every one orbit of Jupiter, and in the inner limit, objects orbit four times for every one orbit of Jupiter. Now again, keeping things on the smaller end of scale, I might go from maybe 2 to 1 to 3 to 1, have a smaller, tighter asteroid belt. So let's do that. And the way we'll work this out is we're going to use Kepler's third law. So Kepler's third law is, or at least one formulation of it, is the orbital period, so how long it takes your planet to complete one orbit, is equal to the square root of its semi-major axis cubed divided by the mass of the star. Using this formulation, the semi-major axis is in AU and the mass of star is in solar masses. So our gas giant that's controlling this asteroid belt is here. We know it's semi-major axis, so let's figure out its period. So that's going to be equal to the square root of the semi-major axis cubed. So this guy cubed divided by the mass of the star. And that will give you an answer in Earth years. Now we want belt, we want the outer limit to be at the 2 is to 1 point. The 2 is to 1 mean motion resonance point with that gas giant. And then the belt inner limit, we want that to be at the 3 is to 1 mean motion resonance point. So to figure out the period of each of those points, it's dead easy. So if we have an outer period, so if one orbit is 25 years, something that completes two orbits in that same space of time is going to have half the year length. So we simply just take the period of the giant and divide it by this limit here. And that gives us 12 years. And then the inner period. Same thing again, you take the period of the gas giant. So for every one gas giant period, an object at the inner limit of our asteroid belt completes three orbits. So we simply divide that by three. And now that we know some periods, we just convert them back into semi-major axes to get the distance from the beginning of our asteroid belt to the end of our asteroid belt. So inner, we'll call it AU. And outer, AU. And to convert back, we just need to do a little bit of maths on this to rearrange everything to get it in terms of A. So that would be mass, the mass of the star, multiplied by the inner period squared, and all of that raised to the third power. And again, all of that is, it's just a rejiggering of this equation to get it in terms of A. And that means that our inner limit is at 4.48 AU. And let's round that. to two sig figs. And all we do is repeat the same process for the outer limit. So again, we get the mass of the star. We multiply it by the outer period squared and the whole shebang raised to the third power. And again, we'll round. And hey presto, we got it. So our asteroid belt goes from 4.48 AU out to 5.87 AU. And assuming we've done everything correctly, nine times out of 10, the orbit listed here will fall within this zone. And if we wanted to, we could increase the size of the belt. So we could say, hey, maybe it's exactly like our belt. So the inner limit is defined by the fours to one mean motion resonance point, And that would increase the size of the asteroid belt. But I'm just going to keep it to something a little bit shorter. So that is that, the first of the warts and all redo type videos of this series. It only took four episodes. We got one updated stellar neighborhood, looking a lot nicer. Art will be incoming. 
and we got one updated planetary system with a little bit more detail, I think looking a lot nicer, art will also be incoming. And next time, we're going to move on to our habitable world. Cannot wait. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, Edgar out.